This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Well, hello everyone, my name is Wiggo and welcome back to another video. This week we're going to be jumping into a new Pokemon DS ROM hack called Pokemon Altered Platinum. This version of Pokemon Platinum features a bunch of new Sinonian forms with amazing designs and very, very cool type combinations. It's a ROM hack based on Pokemon Renegade Platinum, so it makes the game a lot harder, but it builds even further on that, adding the fairy type and also new type resistances and weaknesses. I'll be playing through the entire game with these new forms, trying to get every single one I can find and see how useful they actually are in battle. Before we get into the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't done that already. Let's try and smash 3,000 likes for this video. And I also want to know what your favorite new Sinonian form in this game is. So let me know in the comments down below. With that out of the way, let's see if we can beat Pokemon Altered Platinum with only Sinonian forms. I of course name myself Zwiggo and my rival's name is going to be Elden because everybody on the planet Earth right now is playing Elden Ring. Including me. And I suck at it. Once we're done with that, we get to pick our starter Pokemon from Professor Rowan, but we're just going to go with Chimchar because it doesn't really matter who we pick since these guys don't have their own forms. After burning my rival's penguin to a crisp, I went to Professor Rowan's lab and told him that I did not want to work on the Pokedex with him. Just like Kamado in Pokemon Legends Arceus, he smacked me on the floor and forced me to work on the Pokedex. After getting some balls from Dawn, I went into the grass and found my first Sinonian form, Sinonian Puchiena, which is a psychic fairy type, and I decided to name him Bob. I then made my way over to the trainer school to deliver a package, as I apparently work for UPS in my spare time. I then found a normal ice type Sentret and named it N Ice. But this isn't the last form I saw, I found a couple more, like this electric bug Weedle named Thum, and the last Pokemon I found was Sprit, the fairy bug type Caterpie. Once I got all of these fellas on my team, I went and took on Elden. He stood no chance as I bit through his Pidgey, Munchlax, and eventually took down his Penguin again with Rough House, a new move which is basically play rough, but a little bit of a weaker version of it. Thum the Weedle then evolved into Kakuna, which looked pretty decent. I mean, it's a Kakuna, what do you expect? And I then went fishing in a cave and found a very scary ghost water type Chinchou, which I named Angelo. Because as a kid, I used to watch this series called Angelo Rules. Don't really remember what it was about, but I remember thinking it was pretty damn good. Once I reached Orberg City, I got some gift Pokemon from these two reporters, and they were so nice to me that they gave me a shiny Torchic. And this is far from the last shiny I find in this video, so definitely be on the lookout for some more. I then found Uranium, the Slugma, a poison type, and if I didn't know better, I would say this thing comes straight out of Pokemon Uranium, hence why I called it Uranium. Inside the cave, I also found Polly the Aeron Fire Steel type, and probably the best looking Mon I've found yet. I then sent Rourke back to his gym because he was once again not doing his job, but before I went and challenged him, I did evolve my Caterpie into a Metapod, and I found Aang from Avatar The Last Airbender. It's even called the Air Monk Pokemon. This is the best thing to come out of any Pokemon ROM hack ever. Once we were done capturing all of our team members, we went and challenged Rourke. He lit off with a little leap, so I went in with Thum and just bug bited it twice to take it down. For Numel, I decided to swap out into Angelo and Water Pulse it since that's four times super effective and it's going to take it out in one hit. But his Cranidos then came out and killed me with a Pursuit. Luckily, this isn't a hardcore Nuzlocke. So I brought in Polly, went for two Metal Claws on the Cranidos while getting hit with Zen Headbutts, but eventually I did come out on top. His last Pokemon was an Anorith, and with a Water Gun, my Aeron went down, so I swapped in Aang, Air Cuttered it twice, and won my first Gym Battle. With our gym badge in hand, we went back to Jubilife City and helped Dawn beat up some Team Galactic members. I also captured Sonic the Rock-type Sandshrew and Dust the Rock-type Electrike down at the Valley Windworks. That wasn't the only thing I found at the Valley Windworks, I also found a Flying-type Pineco and I named it Wah. As we all know, Team Galactic is once again invading the Valley Windworks trying to steal all of its power, so we have to go and stop them. 
Commander Marzir, the grandchild or the great-grandchild of Aretsu, didn't really have the best team as Dust took out her Zubat with some Rock Tombs. She then brought in Elekid as my Electrike died from the poison damage, but luckily for us our Electric-type Kakuna is just a tiny bit stronger, killing it with only two Bug Bites. Polly finished off his Yanma with Flame Wheel, but not before the Yanma took down Kakuna with Sonic Booms. She now doesn't have an illegal Perugly anymore, she actually has a Glamiao. And Polly the Aaron pulled out a very, very close victory with only 1 HP left, but he finally got rid of Team Galactic. Before we go to Eterna Forest, we pick up a couple more Pokemon, including a Fairy type Budju and a Grass type Mareep who kind of looks like Shaman. Normally we would just go through the entirety of the woods with Cheryl, but before we can do that we have to prove our worth to her that we are a good trainer. Bob gets absolutely destroyed by her Makuhita, so I bring in Ong the Airbender to aircutter it and take it down. Ong then also manages to take out Drifloon with another one and Munchlax then ultimately finishes me off. Polly then roasted the Munchlax with some Fire Fangs. Her last Pokemon Chansey though didn't go down without a fight, killing me with an Ice Beam and a Thunderbolt. But Thum's Bug Bite made me beat Cheryl, so we finally get the privilege to go with her hand in hand through the forest. In the forest I managed to find myself a Huanian Paris, who kinda looks like a nice type but it's actually a Poison Fairy type. And his name is Fred. Our Kakuna then finally evolved into Beedrill. And I'm not gonna lie, this is probably the coolest Beedrill that I've ever seen. It also has the Hustle ability, so now its moves do more damage, but they also have a higher chance to miss. I then found Nebi the Swablu, a Psychic Fairy type, and I named it Nebi because it definitely reminded me of Cosmog in Generation 7. But we're not done yet, we have an entire catching spree to go through, we also get a fire type trap inch named Force, as well as a rock ghost type Lunatone which I never used, and a fire ghost type Soul Rock, which I also never used. Now the final Pokemon I found in Mount Coronet was an Absol, a dark steel type, so you know I had to name it Matt. And if you loved Hisuian Growlithe, well take a look at Sinonian Growlithe, an ice type. And I'm not gonna lie, I think I like it more than Hisuian Growlithe. So I captured it and named it Samir. We then found our way to the shack in the snow and finally met up with Gardenia since she is also not doing her job and we have to challenge her to a gym battle. Once we do that, we first evolve a couple of Pokemon, namely Sentret into Furret, Sandshrew into Sandslash, and finally Trapinch into Vibrava, who turns into an electric fire type. Really cool. Pretty sure this is regularly only shared by Rodom Heat. And with these beautiful new strong evolutions, I went to take on Gardenia. But in this game, not all of the gym leaders just have their normal typing. They have other typings to cover their weaknesses, as Gardenia here starts off with a Torkoal. And that sets up a drought for the rest of her team, which is kind of scary because my Sonic finally takes out the Torkoal, but then a Chlorophyll Execute is going to take me down. My Beedrill then takes out the Execute with Fury Cutter, and for her Vulpix I decide to bring in Ong, but Ong is not fast enough somehow to outspeed this Vulpix and goes down to Flamethrower. So I bring in Thum again and finally take out the Vulpix. She then brought in Stone Flora and I thought that I would just one-shot it with Fury Cutter, but apparently it's a Grass Fire type in this game and I get destroyed by a Weather Ball. So I bring in Force, Dragon Rage the Stone Flora twice and finally finish it off. Her second to last Pokemon is Roselia, which in this game is a fighting fairy type. Luckily, my force still has two flame wheels in the bag and takes down the flower girl. Her last Pokemon is once again a Chlorophyll Ivysaur, which takes me down somehow with a single sludge. But I still have Polly the Aeron, who can then take out this Ivysaur with Fire Fang. And that's how I acquired my second gym badge. After the battle, I used an Ice Stone on my Growlithe and he evolved into Arcanine. We then hear that Team Galactic is once again up to no good, so we head on top of the Team Galactic building and take on Jupiter. Samir is a little underleveled compared to her Drifloon, but I still go for the Ice Fang. As I try to take it out with my second one though, she swaps in Bronzor, so I go into it Polly. A couple Fire Fangs later and the Bronzor is down though. She brings in Shellow, so I go into my Shellow's killer Redrill and take it out with Spark. Her Drifloon then manages to take out my Samir, but I bring in Force to take out Drifloon with Crunch. Now 
our last Pokemon, Stunky, went down to my Fire Fang as well, but because it has Aftermath, it decided to take my Vibrava down with it. Once the battle was over though, we get our chance at getting a Porygon, but not any Porygon, Huanian Porygon, which is an electric type with Levitate, which means that it does not have any weaknesses. Too bad it's not going to be too useful until we get an upgrade and a dubious disc. Cynthia then gives me an egg and it hatches into an apple, and it's actually a grass water type apple. Shared by Ludicolo, one of my favorite Pokemon of all time. We then went through Wayward Cave with this little girl because she lost her ribbon, and while I was in that cave a couple of evolutions happened. Chinchou evolved into Lantern and Aeron into Laron. And just as I'm about to head to Mount Coronet, I get stopped by Dawn and she wants to battle me. She leads with a Piloswan and as I hit a Pin Missile with my Beedrill, I get taken out by an Avalanche and an Ice Shard. So I do the next best thing, bringing in Angelo and taking it out with Bubble Beam. Polly then takes out her Grotto with Blaze Kicks as she literally can't touch me. For low Pony, I decide to swap in Angelo because I knew it was going to go for Jump Kick and somehow it hit me even though I'm a ghost type. This low pony proceeded to take out Angelo and then Samir until I brought in Aang and finally took it out with two air slashes as it's part fighting type in this game. With our last Pokemon being Clefable, that's perfect for us, we have our steel type Laron, iron headed once, and that's the dawn battle done. I then found a tree that was on fire, but as it turns out, it was a Tropius, a fire grass type. Don't know how long it's going to live though. And I customarily named it Wildfire. You know, all of these new Pokemon designs look really, really good. But you know what can also look really, really good? A website. And that's why I want to talk about the day sponsor, Squarespace. If you ever wanted to make your own website, but it's too hard to write code or to get a web domain, well, Squarespace makes everything super easy with their templates and easy to use interface. If you maybe want to run a company and you have a social media account for that company, you can also easily connect it to your website via Squarespace and you can even embed your own videos for more and better visual representation on your website. So if you've ever wanted to make a website, head on over to squarespace.com slash Dwigo or check the link in the description for 10% off on your first website or domain by using code Zwiggo. And once again, a big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. I then met Aaron from the Elite Four and got my ass whooped. And while I was going to pick up Fantina, I found Mirror B in the contest hall. I only realized this now, so I didn't talk to him, but I'm really curious on what he's about to say. With this satisfying encounter out of the way, I went to Fantina's gym. Decided to lead with Arcanine because she leads off with a Drift Blim. After I hit it with two Icicle Crashes and try to take it out with the third one, she swaps out into Lantern. So I bring in my Absol, Night Slash the Lantern twice and take it down with a critical hit. Driftblim then gets taken out by a Night Slash as well. Miss Magius is part Fairy type, so an Iron Head takes it down from full health. And finally, my Absol's Reign of Terror ends with a Quick Attack from Low Punny. I then bring in Sonic and Spam Rollout on the third one, it finally goes down. She brings in Gardevoir but uses Protect so my rollout stops. And after hitting one more Night Slash and Accelor Rock, we finally get taken out by Psychic. Polly then takes out the Gardevoir with Iron Head and her final Pokemon is Umbreon. I bring in Thum and finish this battle with one last pin missile. Three gym badges acquired, time for another rival battle against Elden. This battle wasn't too hard though, my Arcanine took down Pidgeotto with Icicle Crash, Yanma as well. Snorlax was definitely a beefy boy as I try to take it out with some Icicle Crashes and Crunches but ultimately go down to Body Slam. So I bring in Sonic instead and just like I took down that Gardevoir earlier, I take down this Snorlax with Rollout. Primplup then comes out, so I bring in Beedrill and try to go for the Spark, but he burned me with a Scald, so my Spark barely does anything, and I get taken out by Rock Tomb. I then bring in Absol, Night Slash that Penguin, and win my battle. A Maiden in Distress then comes and calls for our help. So we have to go to the Mansion, which is being invaded by Team Galactic once again. 
After taking out all the grunts, we ultimately have to come up against the final commander, Saturn. And Saturn here forces an old man to fight against us as well. Luckily, we have Elden on our side to try and take them down. After winning, I picked up a Thunderstone and a Pikachu and evolved it into Huwainian Raichu, which is part Ice type. Once we reach Valstone City, I head on over to the department store immediately because they have so many good held items here. Choice scarves, choice bands, choice picks. Anything you need that will make your Pokemon more overpowered is in this store. Once I'm done with my shopping spree, I evolve my Metapod into Butterfree. And while normally Butterfree is not that great of a Pokemon, in this game its stats have been buffed so badly that it's going to be one of my most important team members yet. Since the next gym is also a fighting type gym, I decided to evolve Bob into my Tiena, and also Pineco into Fortress, which turns into a flying electric type. And last but not least, Swablu into Altaria, and this Altaria is Dragon Psychic, so a pretty overpowered typing. But its stats aren't that great. It looks beautiful though, not gonna lie about that. Oh yeah, and finally I also evolve my Paras into Parasect. Fairy Poison might also be pretty useful. Once I hit the gym, which I don't do enough in real life, I finally found Broken Nose Maylene at the end of it. Weirdly enough, she doesn't even start off with a fighting type, she leads with Typhlosion. But a critical hit Psychic from Nebi is going to take it out. He then has a Glacian, which takes me out with Shadow Ball. And as I try to take it out with a Celerock from my Sonic, I get destroyed by Earth Power. Wow, the Fortress comes in and finally destroys Glacia on the Thunderbolt. Lucario goes down the same way. We then also see the final form of Aang, Medicham, and my Thunderbolt should have taken it out, but it had a Focus Sash and takes me down with Ice Punch. Bob can then take it out with Play Rough and also hit the next Pokemon Star Raptor with one before going down to take down. Fred manages to finish it off with Moonblast, and her final Pokemon is Ninjask. Two cross poisons later and we have acquired our fourth gym badge, which means that we're halfway there. We have to do a couple of things before we can go to Crasher Wake though. First off, help Dawn get her Pokedex back from Team Galactic. Remember, stealing is bad. And if you do it, I will come and beat you up with all of my altered Pokemon. And I told you that we would be finding more shiny Pokemon, because in the grass right here, I found a shiny giraffe rig. Sadly enough, once again a Pokemon that we're not going to be able to use. It looks really good though. We didn't have to go through the entire muddy route, because Crasher Wake was at the end of it enjoying the rain, and just like every other gym leader, he wasn't doing his job, so we had to send him back to the gym. Before we can enter the gym ourselves though, we have to beat up Elden again. But first, my Meditite evolved into Medicham. And I then proceeded to absolutely destroy Elden's Pidgeot with Thunderbolt from Wah. Nebi killed his Tangrowth with Flamethrowers, and his Yan Mega bug buzzed me, which was not a good experience. I tried to take it down with Accelerox from Sonic, but apparently it's Dragon Bug type in this game, not Flying Bug. After learning this, I brought in Bob and finally took it out with Play Rough. And Polion then took me down with a Flash Cannon, and I took him down with two Thunderbolts from Wah. His Snorlax totally destroyed me with Body Slam, and I kicked him in the face with On. His last Pokemon was Flygon, the coolest Sinonian form in this entire game, at least in my opinion. First he killed my Medicham, and then he left my Butterfree with only 6 HP, but ultimately I managed to take him down with Signal Beam. That was way too close for comfort, so let's try and do it a little bit better against Crasher Wake. Since I knew it was going to be a water type gym leader, I evolved Applin into Togetic. Yeah, I know, it doesn't make sense. And this gym model has actually been made harder because it's raining in his gym, which helps his entire team. Norm didn't have any of it though, I nasty plotted and then thunderbolted his Blastoise to take it down. Next up was Heracross, a weird water type but a Thunder also took it down. His Floatzel then ultimately finished me off with an Aqua Tail, but I still had Fortress on the team who could Thunderbolt that lifeguard and take it out. He then had a Raichu on his own, and since I'm Choice Scarfed, I'm just going to hit it with one more Thunderbolt before it takes me down with Ice Beam, and my Choice Bandit Beedrill took it down with a single Leech Life after that. I also tried to take down Ludicolo, but he one-shot at me with Surf. So my Butterfree manages to take it out with a single Bug Buzz before he brings in his final Pokemon, Skarmory. I Bug Buzzed it one last time because I was Choice Specked, 
and then brought in Nebi to finish off this battle with one last flamethrower. Five gym badges acquired, only three more to go, but first we have to do a lot of story things. We start off with a kaboom. We get some deodorant from Cynthia, spray that in the duck size, find an ice bug type scyther, and made our way to old lady town where Dawn was once again eager to battle. The battle started off great with Norm killing Alakazam with thunder and thunderbolt. Lopony then got paralyzed by one more thunder as it takes me down with an ice punch. Beedrill then comes in and takes it down with Leech Life as she brings in her starter Pokemon Torterra. I think I can one-shot it here, but I don't, and I get taken out by a Stone Edge. This makes me go into Butterfree to take it out with Bug Buzz, and the next Pokemon Mamoswine also goes down to Bug Buzz. Her Vaporeon then finishes me off with Hydro Pump, and I take that thing down with Thunderbolt from Wa. Wa is that strong that he also Thunderbolts her last Pokemon Cafable and gets a critical hit, winning me the battle. Team Galactic is once again up to no good as they want to destroy this ruins as well with another bomb. So I show their boss Cyrus who's the real boss. By taking out Rodon with Ice Beam from Raichu, Ninetales gets destroyed by my Applin's Waterfall, Hunchcrow doesn't stand a chance against Wa's Thunderbolt, Nidoking is pretty strong and takes out Norm and also does a huge chunk of damage against Sprit and ultimately also takes down Wa before I bring in Thum and ultimately take it down with Leech Life. His next Pokemon Absol goes down to two Leech Lives as well and he then has one last Pokemon Lantern. Normally I would go for Spark here but because I am locked into Leech Life I hit it with two more, get hit with Shadow Ball, go down and Sprit cleans up the mess with a Moonblast. We finally get the entirety of Team Galactic out of this town and then get our own Flygon. And the HM for Surf, which is pretty important. We then get a request to go to the Pal Park and pick up some tea to satisfy a guard. After showing them that we're not to be messed with and just want some free tea, we go and give said tea to the guards so we can finally enter Canalave City. And if you're in Canalave City, you have to go and battle on the bridge. It's just what real men do. With Buccaneer, my new Scyther, I went and Ice Cold Crash this Pidgeot. Then it was Flygon against Flygon. Luckily, I teached mine Earthquake so that mine would come out on top. Since we're part Electric type, we also take down his Empoleon with two Thunderbolts. And I try to take down Tangrowth, but my Flamethrower only does about half and an Earthquake takes me out. Beedrill comes in and saves the day with Leech Life. With that Leech Life, he also takes down a Yan Mega, but Snorlax is just too strong and body slams and crunches me until I'm down. My Scyther then goes for one last close combat and wins the battle. Before we take on Byron though, we have to go to Iron Island together with Riley so that Byron will see that we have trained there and that we're strong enough to take him on, even though we can already beat his ass if we wanted to right now. So once we show Riley who is boss, we get to go through the entirety of the island and I found a shiny Steelix to get her with him. This is also where I found out that some shiny Pokemon have actually been altered, as you can see by this blue Steelix. Sadly enough, Riley had no mercy and destroyed it with his Salamance's Fire Blast. I also found a metal coat to evolve my Scyther with, and I was very disappointed to see that it turned into a regular Scizor, which means that I can't use it anymore. My Laron then evolved into Agron, also a very cool Pokemon, and we finally got permission from Byron to go and challenge his gym. The gym battle starts off Steel-type versus Steel-type. And as I try to Earthquake his Bastiodon, which I thought would take it out since it's 4 times super effective, I was pretty surprised to see that it's only doing about half of its health. I kept on pushing through though, but it kept using Slack Off so my Earthquakes weren't doing enough damage and I ultimately went down. So I bring in Ang the Medicham and Aura Sphere that Bastiodon. And that Magnezone. For Parasect, I decided to go into Raichu, but I didn't do enough damage and ultimately got taken out by Leech Seed. That was a pretty bad play on my part. But my Beedrill's Twin Bulb Attack, which is basically Twin Needle, but then Electric type, took down this Parasect. Mantine should have been an easy one shot, but I missed two of my Twin Bulbs because of my Hustle ability and got destroyed by Hurricane. Luckily I still had Wa on the team who could take it out with Thunderbolt, but then Lapras, once getting hit with Thunderbolt, took me down with Ice Beam. I brought in Aang, killed that Lapras with Aura Sphere. Scizor is actually his last Pokemon, but I can't even hit it as I get destroyed by Bullet Punch. I still have Flygon in the bag and with a single Flamethrower we finally win against Byron. 
Six gym badges acquired, which means that we have another kaboom to deal with. Which means that Team Galactic is attacking all of the lakes and we have to go stop them. But before I do that, I evolve my Togetic into Toga Kiss, which is honestly not as useful as regular Toga Kiss. And we then took on Saturn and Mars at both of the lakes. And once we defeated those, it was time for us to head to the mountains and get real cold. This guy was acting big because he could climb rocks. So I got pretty jealous and decided to go and push a big giant. And as a thank you for pushing that big giant, Candice made me challenge her gym. She immediately leads off with something that's four times weak to fire, so I'm going to take advantage of that and put that Obama Snow to rest. I also took down her wall rain with Norm's Thunder. I tried to hit Scyther, but I was not fast enough and got killed by a single X scissor. Luckily, I know what this thing's typing is, Ice Bug, so four times weak to fire as well. Force comes back in and flamethrowers it into oblivion. Frostlass then takes me down with a Shadow Ball, still don't know how this one shot at me. But I decide to bring in Nelly, which is someone I haven't really shown off yet, but it's a ground steel type Dunsparce. And it has an amazing attacking and speed stat, so I would speed this Frostlass and kill it with Iron Head. Her last Pokemon is a Hoenian Noctowl, and I've not seen this thing around, so I didn't know what its typing was. Two Iron Heads later, and the Noctowl wouldn't die and killed my snake. I assumed that it was still flying type, so I brought in Beedrill, Twimbold it, and guess what? It took it out. So our last Pokemon was Clefable, a couple more twin bulbs later, and we win our 7th gym badge just like that. We then learn how to climb rocks ourselves and visit the big man down at the lake. As it turns out, he isn't as big as we thought because he lost to Jupiter. So we give him a pat on the back and head on over to the Team Galactic hideout, where we have to listen to a speech of Cyrus. Unfortunately for you, however, you are maidenless. Luckily for you, however, there is one shining ray of hope for even the maidenless. And I know that I will never forget these wise words. We then see the wise man himself down at his office, and he's not too happy because we're invading his privacy. So we proceed to take down his entire team. We mega horn his Rodon with the Absol, try to take down Ninetales as well, but get destroyed by Fire Blast. Nelly manages to take down this Ninetales though with just one single Earthquake. And I kind of forgot that Lantern was Ghost type, so I hit it with an Earthquake thinking that it would be super effective, but a Hydro Pump came my way and punished me big time. Luckily, we still have our Twin Bulbing Beedrill, killing that Lantern and the next Pokemon Hunchcrow, but then Nidoking comes out, which I can't hit, and since I'm Choice Bandit, I have to switch out. I try to go into Aang, but get one shot like Aang normally does, and I then take it out with Norm's Ice Beam, but Absol is his last Pokemon. A Thunder and a Thunderbolt later, and Cyrus is no more. We then beat Saturn down in the basement to set free the Lake Trio. We do quite a lot of rock climbing down at Mount Coronet, and eventually reach the Spare Pillar, to try and stop Team Galactic. And guess who's here to try and get a redemption arc? Elden. He's going to help us against Mars and Jupiter because they both have six Pokemon, which means we will be facing 12 Pokemon. And that won't be a walk in the park. Absol is able to do some decent damage to their teams, taking down three Pokemon, but ultimately going down to Electivire. Nelly then also takes down three Pokemon with Earthquake, including Electivire, Solrock, and Lunatone. But once they are out of the picture, I get taken down by Gastrodon's Hydro Pump. Medicham then takes out Perugly, but Magnezone finishes me off with a Shockwave. And then ultimately, together with Yan Mega from my rival, we take down the last three Pokemon Skuntank, Tangrowth, and Magnezone. Once this is all done, we see the end of the world with Yalga and Palkia opening up a space-time rift portal and sending us to the distortion world together with Giratina. It's just something every 11-year-old has to experience. Once we're in the origin world, we have to put some balls into holes. And once we do that, we get help from the Lake Trio and ultimately get down to Cyrus. Now, this is not a regular battle because first we have to beat Dialga and Palkia, which are under his control, and then we have to beat his regular team. So my entire team had to work together to take down the two legendaries that were 
way higher level than my entire team. And once that was done, we got a heal from Cynthia and then took on Cyrus's regular team again. And the battle started off great as my Absol took down the Rodon with Vampire Fangs, which is basically Leech Life but in Dark type move. Nelly killed Ninetales with Earthquake and then Thum took down Lantern with Twin Bulbs, but Hunchcrow ultimately finished me off because I missed. Norm then had to come in and kill it with Thunderbolt, and Nido King also went down to Ice Beam. The last Pokemon Absol finally took me down, so I had to swap in to Fortress and finally finish it off with Thunderbolt. That way, we finally defeated Cyrus and saved the entire world. But first, we have to have an epic battle with Giratina before we can leave the Distortion world. And it wasn't really that epic because I just threw my Master Ball at it. Then reach the city with the best music of this entire game, Sunny Shore, and go to the lighthouse to help Faulkner get back the spark of life by beating the absolute crap out of all of his Pokemon. Being an electric type gym leader, it's pretty weird to start off with something that's weak to electric, a Crobat. Luckily, I just let off with my Beedrill and Twin Bulb it, and that was that. For Flygon, I decided to go into Absol, and yeah, that was a really bad mistake because I got killed by Flamethrower, but then Butterfree somehow took it down with Moonblast. His fridge then stood no chance because I Moonblasted it twice as well, and we then see Porygon Z, a very cool looking Pokemon which I can't way to get myself but I still haven't found an upgrade. This Porygon Z takes me out so I bring in Nelly and decide to kill it with an Earthquake. Because I have Mold Breaker I was able to break through its Levitate which was really useful. A Sharpedo then killed me with Waterfall as I probably should have gone for Megahorn. I then make another big mistake bringing in Nebby and getting destroyed by Vampire Fangs. Norm the Raichu finally took it down with Thunderbolt and his last Pokemon was an Alakazam, one hour sphere and my Raichu was no longer on the battlefield. But I luckily still had my Beedrill with one more Leech Life, I finished off Alakazam, got my final gym badge and made my way over to Victory Road without any more problems. Except having to beat up Marley and once I did that I had to go through a certain section with her. I don't know why all the girls want to walk with me in this game but... They probably don't know I'm only 11 years old. Once that was done, I found myself a Roselia, which I captured, but I never evolved it because I could not find out how to evolve this thing. And then normally at the place where you meet Shaman, we meet Dawn this time. This is our last battle with her as well. But honestly, her team was way too easy to beat, so I'm just going to skip over this battle and make my final team for the Elite Four and Champion. First, I finally found an upgrade and evolved my Porygon into Porygon 2 and then into Porygon Z. I then went fishing at one of the lakes to find myself a Huanian Dratini, which is a water dragon type, so only weak to dragon and fairy, which will be really useful as well. I evolved that into Dragonair and then into Dragonite. And the final team I went with was Nelly the Dunsparce, Matt the Absol, Sprit the Butterfree, Thum the Beedrill, Laser the Porygon Z, and finally Hydra the Dragonite. Now before we can enter the championship and challenge the Elite Four, we have to show our rival who's boss one last time. As our Beedrill destroys his Pidgeot with Twin Bulb, Hydra managed to take care of Flygon with a single Surf. Yeah, Mega is now a Dragon type, so I thought Hydra is easily going to be able to overpower it with a Dragon Pulse, but it has a Focus Sash and then killed me with Dragon Pulse Bug Buzz because of its speed boost. My Porygon Z then took out Yan Mega and Tangrowth with Ice Beam, but Snorlax was going to be a little bit too strong, so I went into Absol trying to kill it with Vampire Fangs, but Earthquake stopped me in my tracks. I then tried to take it out with Dunsparce, but an Earthquake once again came my way and didn't really feel too well. I then spammed Moonblast with Sprit until the Snorlax finally gave up and he went into his final Pokemon and Polion. Two Moonblasts later and we have our opportunity to go and get revenge on AA Ron. Thum took out Dustox with Fly. Amistar then came out, so I had to swap out into Porygon Z. One parabolic charge later and the Amistar was down. With Lord Helix out of the way, he brought in Butterfree, so I went into Absol and Iron Headed that thing until it was down. For Gliscor, I went into Hydra and killed it with Surf, and I had no idea what typing this area dose was, so it killed me. And it also killed my Dunsparce. 
and my Porygon Z. At this point, I had finally found out that it was part Dark type, so I went into Beedrill and killed it with Leech Life. Which was a good choice because now I could just use Leech Life again on his final Pokemon Tangrowth and win the first Elite Four member battle. Let's move over to Bertha. Since she normally has a lot of ground and rock type Pokemon, I knew that Hydra was going to be putting in the work and we immediately start off by doing that, killing Tyranitar with only two Surfs. My Surf barely did anything on Bastiodon, so I swapped in Nelly and killed it with three Earthquakes. Still don't understand why Surf didn't do more though. She then brought in her own Dunsparce, but mine is faster and stronger, so I Earthquaked it and killed it. Nidoking went down the same way. And for the final two Pokemon, Skarmory and Sandslash, I had to swap out into Porygon Z, Parabolic Charge both of them, and beat Bertha. Now it's time to take on Flint, Bug's brother. In regular Diamond and Pearl, there might not be that many fire types, but he has quite an abundance of them. Starting off with a Typhlosion who gets ripped with a Surf. For Gyarados, I went back into Porygon Z, Parabolic charged it, and it went down. He then has an Agron, so I went into Nelly, who's 4 times super effective, and earthquake it. Once we one-shotted it, he brought out Tropius, and my Earthquake did only about half, but he then killed me with Flare Blitz and did a lot of damage to himself. My Beedrill's Twin Bulb then took it out, but his Pidgeot then avoided my attack and countered back with a Boom Burst. That was the end of my Beedrill, but we still have another Electric type in Porygon Z, so we take out Pidgeot with Parabolic Charge and Toxic Rogue as well. The next Pokemon trainer was going to be Lucian with his Psychic types. I knew that Absol was going to have to put in work here, and he starts off by taking out Bronzong with Vampire Fangs. We then also take down Mawa while with two iron heads before going down because of my life orb damage and having to bring in Nelly. Nelly's iron heads were not strong enough to kill his dust nor so we get taken out by Dream Punch, but my Beedrill could come in and finish it off with Twin Bull before Altaria finally took me out. Dragonite then managed to take out this Altaria with two Dragon Pulses before he brought in Slowking. My Dragonite fell, so I brought in Butterfree, Bug Bust, his Slowking, and Exeggutor, and that was Lucian out of the way. Let's go to the hardest battle of this entire game, Champion Cynthia. I'm sorry, Cynthia, but Volo is just better at this point. You've got to step up your game a bit. And stepping up her game is exactly what she did, starting off with a very powerful Dust Noir. Luckily I still had Absol in the front and my Vampire Fangs can one-shot it. Her intimidating Garchomp came out and I was expecting an Earthquake so I swapped in Porygon Z with a Levitate ability and then took it out with Ice Beam. Her Togekiss then came out but a Stone Age was enough to finish off my Porygon Z. Beedrill then took out Togekiss, Bronzong and Raichu all with Leech Light. And her last Pokemon was a Milotic, and I was expecting this thing to be part fairy type, so I went into Butterfree, Moon Blasted it until it turned into a moon itself, and that was Cynthia and her team defeated. Not gonna lie, she was probably the easiest person to defeat in this entire league. And with that out of the way, we have managed to complete Pokemon Altered Platinum with only Hoanian forms. This is probably the best DS ROM hack I have personally ever played, so I highly recommend checking it out, because I had so much fun just using these new Pokemon, and I absolutely loved sharing this experience with you guys. As always, let me know in the comments down below what you would want me to do next, and I also want to thank my membership and Patreon supporters for su supporting the channel. If you wanted to see yourself, you can click the links in the description. It's always appreciated, but not needed. And with that out of the way, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. I'm Zwigo, and I'll see you guys next time.